15. When Amida, on becoming a Buddha, first taught the Dharma, the Shravakas and Bodhisattvas present were numerous, and even if supernatural powers were used, it is beyond reckoning. Thus I bow my head to Amida, the one called Vast Assembly. 16. The countless great bodhisattvas of the land of peace and happiness have reached the stage of succession to Buddhahood after one lifetime, except those who, based on their own vow, wish to unfailingly work to save beings in other lands. To all the bodhisattvas that have virtues like the jeweled forest, wholeheartedly with my palms together, I bow my head in worship to Amida. 17. All shravakas in the land of peace and happiness emanate light and extends one fathom like shooting stars. The wheel of light of bodhisattvas is four thousand li, shining as brilliantly as the purple gold harvest moon. Amassing a stock of virtues from the Buddhas for the benefit of sentient beings. Thus I prostrate myself at the feet of Amida, the ocean like great mind. 18. Avalokiteshvara and Mahastama Prapta are supreme among all sages. Their light of compassion illuminates the great thousand worlds, and they are together with the Buddha, appearing majestically. Working to save beings, they do not rest even for a moment, like the tide of the great ocean that never ceases. Thus I wholeheartedly bow my head in worship to these two great bodhisattvas. 19. Sentient beings born in the land of peace and happiness all possess the thirty-two physical characteristics. Their wisdom is perfect and they are able to enter the profound dharma, reaching the core of enlightenment without any hindrance. They achieve attainment of enlightenment according to their various abilities and the threefold insight is inexplicable. They make use of their five supernatural powers at will, and while on their way to attainment of Buddhahood, they never fall back to the evil realms. The exceptions are those such as Shakyamuni, who were born and appeared in the other worlds of the five defilements. They will be born in the land of peace and happiness, attaining great benefit. Thus I wholeheartedly bow my head in worship to Amida. 20. Bodhisattvas born in the land of peace and happiness attain the supernatural powers of the Buddha and reach everywhere in the ten quarters in one moment. They pay their respects and make offerings to all the various Tathagatas in the uncountable Buddha worlds. Flowers, fragrances, and musical sounds are produced at will, and jeweled canopies and banners as they wish. So wondrous and rare, there is nothing in this world that can describe them. When they scatter flowers as an offering, the flowers form into canopies. The canopies shine brilliantly, and there is nowhere their fragrance does not permeate. The smallest flower canopies are 400 li in diameter, and sometimes it covers an entire Buddha world. They appear and disappear one after another, and the bodhisattvas all rejoice with satisfaction in their offerings. They play celestial music in the air, laud the virtues of the Tathagatas, and praise their wisdom. The bodhisattvas learn the respective teachings, and, after making offerings, they return in the air before their mealtime. The free working of their supernatural powers cannot be fathomed. Thus I prostrate myself at the feet of Amida, the one of the unsurpassed way. 21. All the bodhisattvas in the land of peace and happiness expound their teaching in accord with their wisdom. All myriad things concerning them are free of self. Their purity is like lotus flowers upon which even dust does not alight. They are like boats that can freely go or return, proceed or halt. 
They endeavor to provide beings with the benefit of peace of mind, discarding any kind of partiality. Empty, without thought of self and other, they are like the flame of wisdom that illuminates the long night. They completely possess the three kinds of wisdom and six supernatural powers. Executing myriad bodhisattva practices, they awaken the mind's eye of sentient beings. Such merits of these bodhisattvas are beyond measure. Thus I wholeheartedly bow my head in worship to Amida. 22. In the land of peace and happiness, the Shravakas, Bodhisattvas, human beings, and Devas all perfectly attain wisdom. In bodily appearance and adornments, they do not differ at all. The terms for them differ simply in accordance with the forms of existence in other worlds. Their countenances, dignified and wonderful, are beyond compare. Delicate and subtle, their bodies are neither human nor deva. Theirs is the body of emptiness, the body of boundlessness. Thus I prostrate myself to the feet of Amida, the one possessing the power of non-discrimination.